Hello and welcome to Gearhawk Farms. In today's video, we're gonna demonstrate how to thaw out a frozen pipe. It's pretty important for any farm that has livestock and is in a colder climate like ours to know how to do this or have a plan in place in case you have a frozen pipe or a pipe breaks on you. So that's what we're gonna show you today. And uh, later on, we'll show you how we would uh, repair a pipe and the tools that we would use. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, so a couple days ago, we had some frozen pipes in this barn. And what we do is we can close it up super tight, and that's only if it's super cold out, but sometimes it's not supposed to be so cold. So we leave a couple spots open just enough to let some ventilation come and go, but then it maybe gets colder than we thought, or the wind's coming from the south instead of the north, and it freezes in a different spot than it normally wouldn't. So anyway, we had, we had some frozen pipes, and I'm going to show you what I do. For instance, so if this, you know, being closer to the windows here, and, you know, right now we got our cows out for a couple hours, but let's just say we come here in the morning, we had a little ice in the cups, we had no water. I mean, even if we shut everything up tight, it could take almost all day for that to thaw by itself, if it even would. So, well, let's say we're going to thaw out this here pipe here. And this was a couple days ago, this was a serious problem with that. So, you take these tube socks and lay them on the, on the pipe. And that hot water will transfer the heat. And then after maybe a minute or so there, you can go again. And then say it's up here, we'll wrap it around. And you don't have to hold it very long. You give that maybe 30 seconds to a minute, and then you can go higher or wherever you, you almost have to guess where it's frozen. And a bigger problem, five gallon bucket for the hot water. The hotter, the better. You know, an old, uh, well, like this is an old sweatshirt. Now you got yourself maybe six feet. An old bat towel. It doesn't really matter what you use, but even an old sweater, anything that can soak up a lot of water, and you can instantly come and hold it up in here and just wrap it around, and that water is oozing out of that, draining down onto your pipe, and even like in your valve, put a little hot water in there. So we've tried it once with a hair dryer when we were kids, and that just doesn't work. Your heat doesn't stay where it belongs. And then like these socks, I keep these near the barn. I got a place in the milk house next to the, the cooler where I got this an old piece of wire hanging, basically a makeshift clothesline. I'll hang these up there, they'll dry out. Next day, put them together, you know, turn them back inside out, throw them up on a shelf, they're ready to go. Or I can thaw pipes while I'm milking cows in seconds yeah so that was a demonstration of thawing out pipes and like my father was saying using uh you know water to water almost contact is way better than having like a hair dryer or i've uh tried with a torch before eventually it'll work but not the best burn the barn down yeah something crazy like that You've heard of people using like a welder or something? Well, like a welder, for instance, when they had uh, steel pipes going between the buildings and it hook on an arc welder. I've never tried it. I wouldn't even know how exactly you'd want to do that. I don't think, it doesn't sound very safe, but let's face it, who's going to go get, you know, plastic pipes underground and then you got other risks involved, so. Yeah, so now we're going to show you um, how we would repair one of our pipes or, um, you know, our valves or something like that, so. We're gonna show you a little bit of the plumbing that we would do if something were to break. So this is where I keep all our plumbing and try to be very organized because when we need it, it's it's just that. You got a out water, you need it now and you gotta know where it is. And if I'm away, the people that are taking care of this place know where my stuff is because it's always together. I always try to keep an extra cup on hand. These ain't exactly the ones I use. And I think what happened, I've had this cup for a while, but we couldn't find the ones I use. But let's face it, even the ones you're not so crazy about are still better than no cup if something goes wrong. So we have that and plenty of parts. 
that's mostly half inch and three quarters. Here I got more of the larger parts, more of my inch. I when I when I do plumbing and I find that I'm digging like like these, I had to pick up a few here just a week ago. But when you have trouble finding what you need, you always make a note. I do, and then because you just forget, and the next time you got problems, you got to run to town, and you should be just fixing and getting done. And then I got some short pipes, anything that looks like it's still, you know, could make something. And then there's some longer pipe stuff. And here I got a piece of three quarter, and it usually comes in 10 foots, and I think 21 feet. And I need to pick up some inch, so I usually have inch and three quarter. That's what we have in our barn. I know there's other stuff people use. They got the flexible lines and PVC. This is what my barn started with. This is the program we're in, but um, we're set up for it, so it works. And then I have all my valve parts. And some of those are used parts in there, and there's a few new pieces in there, too. Again, sometimes it's something real simple like that. So they're all together so we can find them. Well, the tools, obviously, two pipe wrenches, and this smaller one a lot of times to get the valve out. And this is another thing. Anytime I got to do work in the barn, I got this just simple wooden toolbox. And I'll start throwing in everything I need. Vice grip, crescent wrench, my pipe wrenches, pipe tape, you know, whatever comes to mind, it's all in there so don't get lost in the feed or the hay or in the manger because it's usually work in some place where it's not so pretty. We'll talk about some of the parts you use. So this is inch pipe. There's black pipe, which is a lot more expensive. It's very hard to use it for gas lines. And I've got a few places where we just bought pieces of black pipe. It, it takes some more of a beating before it would get broke. It don't rust as fast neither. Otherwise it's regular galvanized pipe. These are some used pieces. We always try to have 10 foot chunks on hand. We have some of this type of stuff on hand too because you can't thread that here. I don't have a threader that can make them small like that. So I'll have various little lengths of those we would buy. You got your connectors, your T's. This is all, most of our line in the barn is three quarter. Some of it's an inch. And this is what they call a union. Now you want these every so often in the barn between every other cup, we'll put one of these in. And that's a way so if, so if the line between this cup breaks, we're able to undo this and just take out one section instead of starting all the way from the end, you could end up taking apart half of your system to get to it. Or you have to cut, or if you'd have to cut it, you'd have to bring it to the shop, re-thread it, put one of these unions in. So this is an inch. So again, I keep several of these around. You got your three-quarter inch, your half inch, which is actually the black pipe ones again. They're more expensive, but if you want it better, and then even this smaller one, which I don't have very much of this around. And then your reducers. In plumbing, there's like 10 different ways you can do the same. You, you, you can make it the same way using all sorts of different fittings to reduce it or to enlarge it. Now the drinking cup, I don't have a new one and I've been having trouble finding these. These are the ones we always use um, where you can buy parts. And it's kind of interesting, these parts end up being almost expensive as the whole cup. Basically, your heart of your cup is your valve area in your tongue. And sometimes, see there, that's wear from the cow and that pin coming against it here. And I've been known to take that off and put a bead of weld in there, maybe a little grinding to flatten it back out. So it, otherwise the tongue actually bottoms out before it, it can, it can uh, activate the valve. But anyway, this is a really simple, and this is all brass. These are the best I find. And the only place we find rust or something interfering with the valve is right there on the end of that rubber thing. And you can take that out with a crescent wrench or a small pipe wrench. And uh, I don't know, they just happen to be the ones that I've gotten used to and they seem to hold up. Now here's one that's worn really bad. You can see how flat the pin is. Um, the spring usually is always fine. And even the O-ring usually is pretty fine. And sometimes we'll have where this hole here will end up wearing really bad. But anyway, easy to replace, not very cheap. And the whole cup is even more expensive, but and like this one, that's why this one got tor torn out somewhere. It got broke off the flange that holds it onto the stanchion, but 
it would get us by in a pinch until we could find a one that works. Now this is a very expensive kit I got. I've owned this one for 20 years. And I've seen the power ones and you can take it to town to have your plumber do it. But let's face it, on a Sunday morning, you know, good luck with all that. I can come down here to the shop, I can have this done in less time than it takes me to milk cows. So we got our threader. Now I don't know the exact proper terms for all this, but this is my ratchet. And you assemble that. Now right now, I believe I have the inch bit in there, or die, or whatever you want to call it. And you pull that out. Now that reverses it. See, there's an arrow on there. And it's quite oily. We use thread oil. We're going we're gonna to illustrate how we do that. But if you pull that like that, I can pull that out. And let's say we're going to do three quarter inch today. Stick that in there. And then we're ready with that. And we got all the different sizes again. Half inch inch and three quarter are my main ones but when you need these big ones I mean you're not gonna just find anybody to do that and this the pipe cutter and we used to use a hacksaw or chop saw you can use that but if it does, if it's not very straight or square you have a really hard time getting your threader started and then there's another tool which in my dad's kit was a little more primitive than this but he used to have like a oh that was a hand drill they call him a brace where he had the crank on top but basically done the same thing as this and we'll show you how this works to flare out the inside of that because when you get done cutting it, it's kind of got a sharp edge in there it's probably not always necessary but i like to do it and it's a simple thing to do now let's say we were gonna we were gonna replace a whole a huge section in our barn. You know, you may be going to redo it. You could <clears throat> bolt this down to some heavy beam in the barn someplace at a good level. So you actually make, this is actually a makeshift vise. And this piece of chain, so there would be a pipe. That would come around, lock into there. I've never used this one yet, but by my dad's he had one, and I remember we helped the guy re-plumb his barn, and we bolted this down right in his barn, because he didn't have a, his shop was too far away to be running with the pieces, so then you can take all your tools right there, work right there, so, all right, so let's do, we got just an old piece of used pipe, so let's say I had to take a chunk out of the barn that was either cracked or rusted through or broke, and let's say it's about six feet and some odd inches. So you get the whole chunk out here. And first thing before I even take that piece apart between one union and the other, I'll take a tape measure on it. And it comes out to some odd dimension, write it down. So all we're doing is imitating the old piece, which makes it a lot easier than going back up there and then finding out you're a half inch short or half inch too long, because there's really no forgiveness in this stuff. It has to be very close, but I have a pipe vice inside my main vice here so you would we're gonna show you how we we thread thread cutting oil i've had this jug of oil for a long time you don't need very much of it you could probably use any kind of oil but you know like anything if you have the right stuff so we're gonna cut a chunk of this off just to show you how this cuts so you got some rollers on there it's this is a a very handy tool and as far as I'm concerned if it's used right it's so you make a round you tighten it maybe half turn make a round tighten another half and you keep going like that until you finally pops through and that way you can get this thing cut exactly where you want it and there you are. But now see how it leaves that little sharp edge in there. So it basically pinches through. And I've been using this guy for 10 years and it looks like new yet. So now you could use a file in here or maybe don't even do anything, but I like to do this. And this is designed for, I mean, whatever size. It looks to me like it goes up to maybe two inch. 
And there's a ratchet in that. And it kind of polishes that out. Now you can see on the floor here where I fixed the pipe three, four days ago. I was threading a bunch of stuff we still hadn't cleaned up from the last time. But that's all those filings. Now when I get all done, before I take this, this chunk of pipe up and put it into my barn, sometimes it's a good used piece, even a new piece, you get these filings in there, pieces of rust in there. I'll just try to run water through it to flush it out before I put it into the line. Simply because every time we fix water pipes or cups or anything, a piece of rust breaks off, goes down further, wherever, and plugs another valve. And it might happen overnight and you flood your whole barn. So you wanna be sure you get all that out of there before you put it together. Sometimes you gotta take valves apart after the fact and to flush the line, so to speak. And you always wanna do it in the morning hours if you have the choice, so then by evening, you know you're good. The cows have been drinking out of those lines and they... Your foreign stuff in the pipe is flushed out. But we've had it happen, we've learned from experience. So anyway, we're gonna put that on there like that. We got our threader. We gotta make sure we're going the right way. Get it started, a little pressure on it, and this is probably where it really... And then, and I always use the oil because I think my threader will last virtually forever if we, no different than any other blade, if you keep it clean and oiled, it's gonna, it's gonna cut and it's gonna last because these are kind of expensive tools. Now the plumber's got the fancy ones, the power ones, but. Now in here, see I'm just about to the end of my thread and I usually stop someplace in there. And then I have to pull my button out to reverse it. And And there we are. Now you see in there, there's some, well, there's a little piece of something that fell in there, but there's our fresh thread. And then that's all my pipe tape. And I got them on top of screw because what happens is the, when the doors are open and the wind's blowing, little things like this are so light, they end up flying off. And so I put them on a screw and I know where they always are. Kind of thick and gooey and it got a funny smell to it. If anybody knows the smell, they'll know you've been working with plumbing when they smell that on you, but it's a little messy, but I like to use tape, but I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. There's different types of this tape. You got your different widths and then you got your heavier tapes too. Like I think this is some heavier stuff. Depends on what you're doing, how, how aggressive your thread is. This is another thing for a beginner that you can screw up. So you always want to put your tape on the same way you would turn the pipe on or your fitting on. Because if you don't, it just undoes itself. And I maybe go a round or two. I mean, we don't have to get too carried away. We got really nice clean thread there. Let's see, we're going to put this. this T on, so that would be, for instance, where my cup would come up through. And here I only need one pipe wrench because my vice is the rest. Now you can see how working in the shop is gonna be so much better than, if I had to do this all and put it all together like this in the barn, then you gotta have more help to hold things down. So I try to imitate all the pieces that are the problem or potential problems. I've had them where there's just a slow leak. It's just wet around that spot already for a few days. Well, it ain't gonna get better. It's only gonna get worse. One day you'll come there and water will be spraying out. And then you got a big mess besides. So make time, get it fixed. Not super tight, but good and snug. We know this is kind of old school plumbing. I've never went to any plumber's school or anything. So there may be 
other techniques to this that we're not totally aware of, but um, we've been doing this for a long time, and it works. You know, it, it keeps us going. So really, when it comes down to it, it doesn't pay to take shortcuts. It just doesn't. Um, we've had the barn full of water, and you know, you, if you don't put the tape on or the dope on there to help seal it, or you maybe don't thread it quite far enough, or if you don't flush your line out, like in here, you can see a piece down in there, and it probably should be filed off, but that maybe eventually will break off, get stuck in a valve, and it could be a year later, and you end up with these problems. We, we learn from experience, you know, so keeping a few parts on hand, and this stuff's very inexpensive. It can get a little mind-boggling if you're starting it, but once you know what you need, what you always used, it's really quite simple. It's just a matter of staying organized, and it never happens at a convenient time. It's always a chore time. There's always cattle that are belly aching, looking for their water. So make it easy for yourself and be prepared. So that's it for the video. Thought we'd take time to show you guys that because it's that time of year where you better be prepared for frozen pipes or to repair pipes, especially if you have cattle. And uh, typically when that happens, uh, we're not, you know, not real eager to film it. So we figured we'd uh, take the time and show you today. And like my father was saying, you know, not everybody uses old iron pipes like that. I know there's a lot of new ways to do that with like that uh, PEX pipe, that plastic stuff. But uh, that's how we do it here. So leave a comment down below how your water system works. I'd be interested to hear. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.